This is a Thevenin and Norton conversion problem. Given a circuit with four resistors, one voltage source, and two points, X and Y, in the circuit, find the Thevenin equivalent circuit for X and Y, and find the Norton equivalent circuit for points X and Y. This is the Thevenin equivalent circuit. It contains the original points, X and Y. It contains a Thevenin resistor and a Thevenin voltage source. Notice that the Thevenin resistor and the Thevenin voltage source are in series. Notice also that the Thevenin voltage source does not include the polarity yet. That polarity is important, but we have to wait until we can determine that polarity. This is the Norton equivalent circuit. It contains the original points X and Y. It contains a Norton resistor. It contains a Norton current source. Notice that the Norton resistor and the Norton current source are not parallel. Notice that the Norton current direction is not shown. It's important to include the Norton current direction, but we have to wait until we can determine that direction. There are three steps in this solution. The first step could be to find the Thevenin resistance, which is the same as the Norton resistance. The second step could be to find the Thevenin voltage, which is the same as the open circuit voltage, which is the same as the voltage between X and Y in the original circuit with nothing connected between X and Y. The third step could be to find the Norton current, which is the same as the short circuit current. That is, if you connect a wire between points X and Y in the original circuit, and then you find the current in that wire, that's called the short circuit current. It's also equal to the Norton current. As an alternative to the third step, you could use this equation. From steps one and two, when you already know the Thevenin voltage and the Thevenin resistance, you can use this equation to calculate the Norton current. Alternatively to that, you can perform the first three steps and then use the equation to confirm that you have the right answers in the first three steps. Let's start by finding the Thevenin resistance. That means find the resistance between points X and Y. We can imagine connecting an ohmmeter between points X and Y. However, we can't do it now because there's a voltage source in the circuit. We can't do it in this method. That is, we cannot connect an ohmmeter to an energized circuit in this method, and we cannot connect an ohmmeter to an energized circuit on the lab bench either. We must remove all voltage sources and all current sources before connecting the ohmmeter. There, we did it. We removed the voltage source and it's currently open where the voltage source was. We have to replace all voltage sources with wires or shorts. Had there been a current source there, we would have left it open. That's the rule. Replace all voltage sources with wires. Replace all current sources with opens. There's an easy way to remember to replace voltage sources with shorts and current sources with opens. Here we have two Thevenin circuits with the voltage sources removed from both. The voltage source is replaced with an open on the left and a short on the right. Now which circuit, in which circuit does the ohmmeter measure our Thevenin? The one on the left? No. The one on the right? Yes, and that's the easy way to remember to replace voltage sources with shorts. It also works with the Norton circuit. Draw two Nor Norton circuits. Replace the current source on the left with an open. Replace the current source with a short on the right. Connect the ohmmeters. And then answer the question, which ohmmeter measures R Norton? The one on the right? 
No, because the wire shorts out the Norton resistor. The one on the left? Yes. So there's the easy way to determine to replace current sources with opens. Now let's determine the short circuit current between X and Y without using the formula. Determine the current in the red wire. R1 and R3 are parallel now, and R2 and R4 are parallel. So the circuit can be reduced to this. And then I5 can be calculated. And then V13 and V24 can be calculated. V13 is the same as V1, and V24 is the same as V2. This permits us to calculate I1 and I2. And finally, IXY can be calculated after we know I1 and I2. We can confirm our calculation of IXY by using the formula V thevenin equals IXY times R thevenin.